Okay, thank you. Uh, so for everyone listening at home, um, I'm Justin Fanges. So I'll be presenting the manager module. Um, I'm also the, um, the moderator for the uh, forum today online. So, uh, so those who are posting questions online, uh, just bear in mind that I won't be able to read the screen until I finish the presentation. Um, and thank you, uh, everyone who's listening to the live stream for putting up with the little bit of trouble that we had earlier this morning. Uh, just bear with me while I grab my presentation. Okay, so we're looking at the AppSim Manager module. Um, specific, specifically, rather, we're looking at the new manager module that's in 7.6. Um, I put a bit of emphasis on the new there because it has been out for a couple of years now. It first debuted in AppSim 7.4. Um, the uh, difference that this one carries over the other one, basically, as you can see, is that it, uh, it is now using the standardised programming languages, specifically Visual Basic, .NET and C Sharp, whereas the previous uh, Fortran manager uh, was basically a bastardization of a few other older languages. Um, having said that, though, it is still quite good. It is still in use, uh, but this is the future, I suppose you could say. So we'll go into a bit of history behind it. Desired to be a complete, or AppSim rather, is uh, had a desire to be a complete farming systems model. To be able to do that, you need a lot more flexibility than just being able to plant and harvest a crop. So we had the recognition that the user needs to be able to control what is happening within that situation or their simulations. So that's why we put in a manager module. Uh, those of you who have used it, which I assume is, is a fair number uh, in this room, uh, you know that you can use it to basically control all aspects of your simulations. That's either through ones that we've provided for you or through writing your own. So this new one that I'm talking about, um, as I mentioned, Visual Basic or C Sharp, it is far more powerful than the old manager. Uh, you can do uh, things like looping, direct access to variables, uh, a lot more uh, just in general. And it's available on Linux via Mono, which the old one wasn't. And just let me get rid of that. And it's cut off a bit down the bottom. I think that last bit was basically saying that it's the only manager that's available in next generation AppSim. So how do you use it? Where do you find them? In AppSim 7.6, they're in the management toolbox down the bottom. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at the scripts that are in manager.net common task. Um, now, you may hear the word script and the word rule. Um, they're basically used interchangeably. They're the same thing. So how do you use them? If you've built a simulation before, it's pretty much guaranteed that you would have used them if you've ever planted a crop. Um, sowing rule is a sowing script. You need one of these manager rules to sow a crop. You need them to irrigate. You need them to harvest. Um, that's basically the, the basics that these things can do. They, they are, are, of course, a lot more powerful. So you would have seen these before. This is just the standard continuous wheat simulation. There's a manager folder. Uh, we've got three of the old rules there. Sowing rule, sowing fertilizer and harvester. They've got the little blue farmer next to them. And then we've got this new irrigate on soil water deficit, which has got a red icon. That red icon indicates uh, the new manager. Uh, the same is used for Visual Basic and for C Sharp. Um, apart from that, though, you'll notice that the property screen looks more or less the same as it did in the old scripts. You've got your properties, which is basically where you set your user-defined parameters, and then you've got the script tab over there, which is where all the code goes. So to use them, you just drop them onto your simulation and edit the properties on the right. Um, if you're interested in just using the standard ones, you don't need to know any programming, you don't need to do any code, you don't even need to look at this next screen that I'm going to show you. You can just change the properties and off you go. But quite often, what we provide with you is not enough. We try to cover most of the uh, situations that you may find, but obviously everybody's going to have their own unique needs and desires. And so we try to keep them fairly general. And as you can see, we expose the code here so that you can pick one that's close to what you want and then just edit it according to what you actually need. The 
third option that you've got to use these scripts is to write your own from scratch. All apps in variables are available. Now, if I go back one, you'll see this variables and events button up the top. That's what we're looking at on this page here. This lists all of the variables that you can access from AppSim within your scripts. And basically, that is a list of everything that is in every module in AppSim with a public variable. So from here, you can change your nitrogen balance, you can add things, you can subtract things, you can create new variables, um, you know, sums and things like that, means if you want to. Basically, you've got complete access to the entire AppSim engine. Everything that is happening in AppSim is available to you through this interface. As they say, though, with great responsibility comes, uh, sorry, great power, rather, comes great responsibility. So what happens if you're not a programmer? Now, some of the people that I've spoken to pretty much can't tell the difference between this and a C-sharp program. <laughs> and I can totally understand that. Because if you've just started looking at code without anything else, it basically looks like Greek. Um, as an aside, this is an ancient manuscript dating from the 15th century that's written in a cipher. And even with our best cryptographic people working on it these days, we still haven't cracked it. So nobody actually knows what this says. <laughs> so I know for a lot of you, programming is like that. You can't get past the fact that if you want to really be able to use AppSim the way that it was designed to be used, you will need to learn a little bit of programming. You don't have to learn everything. You don't need to become a programmer. You don't need to spend years studying it. You don't need to be an engineer or anything like that. Um, I went over to Africa a couple of years ago. Um, they speak French in the part that I was at. I learned just enough French to be able to order off of the menu. That's all I needed. It got me through. I've already forgotten it all, so don't ask me. But you don't need to be able to speak French to go to a French country. All you need is just a few words to get yourself around. Same with the manager script. You don't need to understand the entire programming language. You just need a few basics to get you going. So which one should you start with? <coughs> so as I said, we've got two, Visual Basic and C Sharp. Visual Basic is easier. Its syntax is closer to English. It doesn't use things like braces and semicolons and things like that that don't really have much of an application in English. Um, you may also have previous exposure to it using them through Excel if you've ever written an Excel macro. Why would you want to use C Sharp? It's closer to pro traditional programming languages um, such as Java, C++, things like that. Um, so it's possible that you may have some background in one of those, in which case you may find C Sharp a bit easier to work with. It can be less verbose um, because we use a few programming shortcuts um, occasionally. You know, we might put a, a substitute a couple of lines with one symbol or something like that. So it can be sometimes a little bit less verbose. And most manager scripts and NextGen AppSim, as you know, are written in C Sharp. Um, as we said, we are we will look at putting. Visual Basic into, uh, into next generation AppSim, but for the time being, everything there is, is in C Sharp. Apart from that though, they both run at exactly the same speed. Um, internally, when they're compiled, they're actually compiled into exactly the same code. So as far as AppSim's concerned, there's no speed difference. As such, they're both capable of doing the same things. Once again, they compile to the same code, so there's no difference when you actually run them. There's no advantage of one language over the other. So in the end, the choice is up to you. Uh, once again, if you've got no background, I'd probably recommend Visual Basic. It is a little bit easier to learn. Um, on the other hand, C Sharp, if you've got the time to put into it, would probably serve you better in the long run. Now, I'm not going to actually go into how to write um, manager codes. I'm not going to go through a program or one of the scripts or anything like that. I've only got a few minutes left and I'm not going to be able to teach you how to read or write a manager script in this time. So instead, take this as an introduction as to, yes, this thing is here. This is where the power of AppSim lies. And if you really want to get everything out of AppSim, then this is where you want to be. 
So instead, I'm going to give you a few example resources uh, to get you started on learning these programming languages. Uh, these are not necessarily recommended or anything like that. These are just a couple that I found that looked pretty decent. There are heaps and heaps and heaps out there. So uh, for the first one, for instance, I just Googled Visual Basic Tutorials and you know, I got pages of them. Uh, for this particular one though, um, if you do decide to have a look at it, uh, there's a whole bunch of lessons, uh, 20 or 30, something like that. You really only need to do up to lesson 16. That will give you the underlying base language and a good solid understanding of what you actually need to do to program uh, AppSync. And for C-sharp, there's uh, another link there and there's a section that's called the basics, which I think is six or seven tutorials long. Uh, once again, you only need to do that. You don't need to worry about things like polymorphism or inheritance or virtual code or stuff like that. You can ignore all of that. You won't need it. And finally, if you want a couple of hardcover books, um, any of the SAM series, they're pretty good. And anything from O'Reilly Media, um, they've always got pictures of birds on the front, so they're easy to pick. Um, both of those series are very good for, uh, for introductory programming courses.